Hi there, my name is Philip and I'm a member of the Knowledge Based Systems Group of University of Potsdam. This video is the first part of a demonstration of our Potesco framework based on the tabletop game Ricochet Robots. Before we start, let me please give you a short introduction. As many of you probably already know, Potesco is a suite of programs for grounding and solving answer set programs with various extensions. At its core lie Gringo the Grounder and Clasp the Solver. But there are of course many extensions such as an incremental extension iClingo, an online extension oClingo, an onset extension unclasp and many many more. If you're not yet familiar with Potasco, please check out our SourceForge website where you can get the source code as well as plenty of documentation of our programs. Now let's talk about the game which we'll use to demonstrate those tools. Ricochet Robot is a tabletop game for two or more players. As game tokens we have four differently colored robots, red, blue, green and yellow, as well as correspondingly colored targets. The board itself is divided into 256 rectangular cells where some cells can have a barrier that blocks movement in a cardinal direction. We begin the game by putting the four robots into the four corners of the board. And we select a single target chip which we put on a random cell of support. The ultimate goal of the game is then to take the robot which has the same color as the target and bring it to it with a minimum number of moves. However, one has to consider that the movement of robots is restricted in the sense that they can only move horizontally or vertically. Furthermore, a robot continues to move until it hits the edge of the board or a barrier on a field. After collision, a robot can then ricochet, that is, it can change its movement direction. Let me show you by an example how this all plays out. Initially, we put the robots in the four corners and put the target on a field of our choice. Observe that the target is the red one, which is placed on the cell 6-7, where 6 is the abscess and 7 the ordinate relative to the origin in the upper left corner. To bring the red robot to the red target, we start out by moving it four steps, first east, then south, again east, and again south. Now we are facing the problem that we cannot simply move the robot again east and stop at the field which holds the target, since the robot only stops when it hits a barrier or another robot or the edge of the board. Thus we have to use the other robots to act as bumpers such that the red robot can stop at the field with the red target. For that we move the green robot three steps and afterwards the yellow robot also three steps. Now we move the green robot out of the way so that the red robot can move to the east. Then we move the green robot back to its original position and let the red robot ricochet at the eastern barrier such that it changes its direction to the west and comes to a perfect hold over the red target. Please observe that the yellow robot helps the green robot to exactly stop at the location directly left of the target and likewise the green robot allows the red to stop exactly over the target. After we have illustrated the concept of Ricochet robots, let me show you now how to encode problem instances as well as the problem itself in answer set programming. Let's start out by encoding an instance. The target is specified by the ternary relation target. The first parameter of target describes the color of the robot and the second and third the position. Please note that this file contains all potential targets of which we select a single one by giving a number on the command line. For instance, in our previous visualization we selected target red, comma 1, comma 3 which can be selected by assigning goal to number 3. The position for each of the four robots are given by the relation position. As mentioned before, the initial positions of the robots are by default the four corners of the game board. 
The barriers of the board are given by the relation barrier. The first two parameters give you the location of the barrier and the second two give you the direction in which the movement is blocked by the barrier. That is, 1, 0 means that the movement is blocked in east direction, minus 1, 0 in west direction. Similarly, 0, 1 means that the movement is blocked in south direction and 0, minus 1 in north direction. If you take a look on the game board, you can also see that there is always a square in the middle which can't be entered by robots. This square is represented here by those eight lines who are marked with the common middle. With that, we fully described a problem instance for Ricochet Robot. Next, we encode the general problem of Ricochet Robots in ASP. Keep in mind though that this is a naive encoding for illustration purposes. We will introduce more advanced encodings in later parts of this video series. The first line of this encoding denotes the possible time slots. That is, we define time slots from 1 to the maximum number of steps which is defined by the constant horizon. The next line defines the dimensions of the board which is given by the constant dimension. That is, by default our dimension or side length is 16, though that we have a 16 by 16 board. Next we define the possible movement directions for robots, which are the four cardinal directions as mentioned before. The fact minus 1, 0 stands here for movement to the west, 1, 0 to the east, 0, minus 1 movement to the south, and 0, 1 for movement to the north. The relation stop defines all situations in where the movement of the robot is stopped by giving the position of a barrier with coordinates x and y and the direction in which the movement is prohibited with dx and dy. Note that the definition of stop is based on the barriers which are contained in our problem instance. This is a simple auxiliary rule to extend the initial position of the robots by a time parameter zero. The quaternary relation move is the essential part of the answer, as it describes for each robot the step-by-step -step movement to ultimately bring the robot with the matching color to the target. Here, move is defined by a choice whose cardinality is restricted by one for each and every time step. The choice of move is furthermore restricted in a sense that only actually existing robots and valid directions can be part of a move. Complementary to the previous relation stop, the relation hold describes temporary blockages caused by robots who sit in the field x, y at the time point t. That is, if a robot moves towards a robot in x, y, it has to stop at the field next to it. Go to defines possible transitions from one field to the next in a certain direction. Intuitively, it can be seen as the low-level counterpart to the move command that specifies if the movement of a robot from one cell to the next in a certain direction is even possible. The first line reflects that we allow neutral transitions where the robot doesn't go to a new cell. The second line describes a transition to a adjacent field where all fixed barriers represented by the stop relation and all dynamic barriers represented by moving robots and thereby represented by the hold relation are considered. The quaternary position relation gives the position of robot R at time point T, dependent on the movement of the robot. The frame axiom in the next line simply carries over the old position of robots which don't move in the current time step. The last line is an integrity constraint which simply makes sure that the solution contains a plan that puts the equally colored robot on the target within the given time frame. With this encoding, we actually would be finished and can run the program. 
However, in general, we are interested in ideal plans or ideal solutions. That is, we want to get a plan which gives us the shortest number of steps to move the robot to the target. We will show you subsequently how we can achieve this on level of Gringo and Clasp. The minimization of the plan length is accomplished by defining and afterwards minimizing the go-on relation. First, we define go-on based on the fact that we haven't reached the target yet within the given time frame. This integrity constraint makes sure that we don't derive a new move instance for time point t when in the previous time point we didn't derive a go-on instance. This line holds the actual minimize instruction, which makes sure that the answer holds a minimal number of go-on instances. By that, and based on the integrity constraint above, also the number of moves is minimized. Now we have all the ingredients to solve our problem by feeding them into Gringo and Clasp on the command line. To apply our encoding on our problem instance, we have to enter the following command. First, we give all the necessary input information to our grounder Gringo. Afterwards, the grounded program is piped to Clasp. Gringo takes as input the board information, that is what barriers are on the board, the robots and their starting positions, the list of potential targets, our encoding together with our optimization, the maximum horizon and the actual goal that is the actual target which we select out of our list of targets. With these inputs Gringo produces a ground program which is afterwards piped to Clasp. Now let's run this. We retrieve a couple of answer sets who are listed in descending order with respect to our minimization of the plan length. This answer is the ideal solution which gives us a plan of length 10 to move the red robot onto the red target. With this we conclude the first part of this video series. Hopefully you got the basic idea about how to encode problems like Ricochet Robots with ASP. In the upcoming parts we will talk about more advanced encodings and furthermore discuss performance gains achievable by using different configurations and ASP systems of our Potesco collection.